Hey everybody, Ken Hawkins with Really Recovered, and I uh, wanted to talk a little bit today about porn addiction, and uh, man, I think it's a huge, I know, it's a huge problem, um, you know, even inside the church, you know, porn addiction, sex addiction, lust, whatever, sexual immorality was a big deal all through, all through this book, you know, the Bible, man, we heard about sexual immorality and all that stuff and all the problems that it caused and, you know, and I think it's a big problem even in the church that people aren't talking about it, uh, that they have a, a problem with porn uh, and a problem with lust and a problem with all these sinful desires and stuff that they give into in certain ways. And I believe there's even leaders in the church that aren't talking about it. Um, you know, and so I wanted to talk about it a little bit today. Um, and and the, the case study I'm going to use here is Samson. I believe that Samson would have been addicted to porn if he was alive today. He had a huge problem with lust, you know. And, and the story of Samson in the Bible is uh, in Judges 13 through 16. And, and, and in the very first chapter in Judges 13, man, it talks about, you know, Samson has a huge calling on his life to rescue the, the people of Israel from the Philistines. And, and right over in the beginning of... Uh, Chapter 14, you know, Samson, uh, he catches uh, or he sees this woman, this Philistine woman, and it says that she caught his eye. And when he returned home, you know, he told his father and his mother, man, I want to marry this young Philistine woman that I saw that she caught my eye. And his parents are like, man, why don't you marry somebody in one of the tribes around here or whatever? And Samson says, get her for me. She looks good to me. And man, that would be the thing. For Samson, that would just plague him. That would be his vicious cycle that he would always fall into. I mean, in the beginning of chapter 16, it says, you know, Samson went to the Philistine town of Gaza and, and he spent the night with a prostitute. And so he's in uh, a Philistine town spending the night with a prostitute. And later in chapter 16, it says Samson fell in love with a woman named Delilah. Like, he was constantly, you know, he saw things and he thought they looked good to him and he wanted them. And so the first thing I want to tell you is, just because it looks good, doesn't mean it is good. Looks good does not equal is good. And some of us just need to hear that today, because, uh, you know, that's just the advice that this world will give us, that that worldly people will give us. And, and a lot of us are surrounded by those people, and those, those people are in our tight group. And they'll tell you things like, that. man, it looks good to me. You should give it a shot. I just want to tell you that's stupid. That's, that's stupid. Stop surrounding yourself with people like that. And if you're one of those people, you can stop being one of those people. Uh, and I'm going to tell you how to apply it to your life here in a minute. But, but just, I mean, it's this thing where, think about this. This is just, Samson saw it and it looked good to him. And so he had to have it. And isn't that just like porn? I mean, I used to be addicted to porn years ago before I met Jesus, before I surrendered my life to Jesus. And I know, and I know other people who even to this day still are, and, and I talk to them and I meet with them. And it's this thing where you'll spend hours and hours and hours and hours on the internet and on your laptop or on your phone looking through images just looking through these, these images of sex and all these different sites and, and trying to, to find the one that looks good to you and, and kind of sets off that spark and, and then you indulge in that sin, right? And so, you know, it's no different than it was with Sam Samson. Saul saw something that looked good to him and man, he wanted it. And, and, and we can even... Do this, man, and this is why I say, man, everybody's an addict. Just some of them admit it and some of them don't. Like, how many of us, even when it doesn't have to do with porn, go by what we see? Like, we see something and it looks good to us and we just have to have it. I, re I remember, you know, a long time ago in my first marriage, I did it with jobs even. Like, I would see somebody working a job or I would see an ad for a job and I would think, man, that looks like it'd be a good job. That looks like it'd be a good career. And I'd go after it and I'd go get that job. And, and at one time, my, my first wife had our closet, the back half of our closet was just all the different work shirts from all the different jobs I had worked. 
You know, because I was like that with everything. I was like that with everything. I was like that with exercise. I was like that with diet. I was like, man, this diet sounds good. It looks good. Looks like it'll work. I'm going to do this. Oh, man, this new workout routine looks good to me. I'm going to try that. So even good things, we can do that with. People do it with food, right? You see some food and it looks good to you and you, you just got to have it. And you sit there and you think about it. And, and it's the same thing with porn or with women or with men or, or with with drugs or alcohol or whatever it is. It's this thing, man, where it looks good to us and we just have to have it. And that's the same thing, man, that Samson was going through, that it looked good to him and he just had to have it. And eventually, uh, you know, it would be his downfall. It would be his downfall. And what happens is, is if you know the story, if you don't, I'll tell you a little bit about the story. In 16, he falls in love. And, I, you know, obviously, Samson didn't really know what love was. But he, he, fell, he fell in love with Delilah and, and she lulled him to sleep, you know, with his head on her lap. And finally he told her, you know, the secret of his strength and all that. And, and she has the guys come in and, you know, cut his hair off and tie him up. And, and when he woke up, he thought, you know, I'll just shake loose like before. But the Spirit of the Lord had left him. But this is what they did with him, right? They captured him and they gouged out his eyes. They took him to Gaza where he was bound with bronze chains and forced to grind grain in a prison. And so, look, they cut out his eyes, and, and he's, he's chained up, and he's in a prison, and he's grinding grain. And how they used to do this back then, it was this big thing that he had to walk around and push this big stone in a circle. And so he's just chained to this thing, and he's just walking circles, and his eyes are gone. You know, and, and I couldn't help but think, man, how Jesus even talking about adultery and lust and stuff like that says, man, if your eye, even your good eye, causes you to sin, gouge it out, because it's better to enter the kingdom of heaven without... And I, it's, enter, it's better to enter into heaven without your eye than, than to have your whole body and your whole soul and everything thrown into hell. And, and I just picture, man, that this is the first time that Samson could actually see was after he lost his eyes and he's walking in circles. And I just think that he had the realization that like, man, I've been walking in circles my whole life. I've been stuck in this vicious cycle my whole life of I saw a woman and she looked good to me and I had to have it and, and it ended up being empty and it ended up just being a mess. It just ended up being a mess. And how many of us can relate to that? that really, we've just, we've just been spending our whole life like walking in circles, walking in circles in this vicious cycle of doing the same thing. We see something that looks good to us, we have to have it and then... It's just, it's just not what we thought it was, and we go on to the next thing that looks good, and we have to have it, and we have to have it. And, and how many people have been in this vicious cycle with the porn, you know, where they just spend hours and hours and hours on the laptop, and it's just spiritually, it's just killing you. You're just dying inside. You're just dying inside. And so, you know, it was like the first time I think he could really see, you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, man, we live by believing and not by seeing. We live by believing and not by seeing. And I think uh, a lot of times Jesus has to remove the thing in our life that's causing us all that problem so we can actually really start to see, you know, and really start to believe in him. And so, you know, here he is blind, he's walking circles, and I, and I feel like he just has this realization, man, that I've just been walking circles my whole life, and, and it's... And it's never worked out the way that Samson thought it would. And so in Hebrews 11, man, there's this, this, this hall of faith is what it's called. It lists off all these people of faith in the Bible. And every time I read uh, Hebrews 11, every time I've read that, you know, Samson's listed in there in the hall of faith. And I always kind of was, you know, curious. I was spending some time even this morning reading and praying and spending some time with Jesus just talking about, man, why is Samson in the hall of faith like and I feel like his whole life he was such a screw up you know which is great for me because it gives me hope I'm like man if Samson can be the way he was and it should give you hope if Samson could be the way he was and still end up in the hall of faith in Hebrews 11 it's like man me and you got a shot right we got a real shot but Jesus just pointed it out to me today it, it wasn't you know it wasn't necessarily you know how Samson started but how he finished and he finished strong. And that's what I want to tell you today, man. I want to, want to tell you, I want to try and encourage you to finish strong. To finish strong. Uh, because what happens is, is, you know, all these Philistines, they all gather and they're all getting drunk and they're all, 
you know, laughing and joking around and like, man, Samson, the one who had defeated so many of us, you know, now is under our power and they all get drunk and they say, man, bring him out so we can kind of, he can amuse us basically, bring him out so we can make fun of him and, and he can entertain us by, by us making fun of him and whatever. And so, you know, they bring him out and Samson says to the young servant who leads him out, by the hand, he said, man, place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple. I want to rest against them. Now, the temple is completely filled with people. All the Philistine rulers were there, and there were about 3,000 men and women on the roof who were watching as Samson amused them, or, you know, they mocked Samson as they made fun of him. And then here it is. Here it is. Here's the thing, like that 2 Corinthians 5, 7 that I just talked about, man, where it says, uh, you know, we live by believing and not by seeing. Here's the thing where you can actually see this you know, played out in Samson's life where he lives uh, by believing and not by seeing for like the first time in his life. It says, then Samson prayed to the Lord, sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. That he has this moment that it's not about what he sees anymore. He's not interested in all that stuff. He's not, you know, his, his eyes are gone. And he has this realization, man, that he has to live by believing and not by seeing. It says, man, with one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Then Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple, pushing against them with both hands. He prayed, let me die with the Philistines. And the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So he killed more people when he died than when he had during his lifetime. What I don't want you to miss is what Jesus showed me here this morning. We have this picture of Samson, it says, man, look, look how he, he finished strong, how his death actually accomplished more than his life when he submitted to the will of God the Father. And he says, man, remember me one more time. And he puts his hands on the pillars and I just picture him just pushing out like this. Man, and I just saw this picture of Jesus. I just saw this picture of Jesus, how it points to Jesus, where Jesus you know, the Son of God stretched out His arms like this on the cross. And in Luke 23, verse 46, it says, Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, He breathed His last breath. That He just like shouted, Father, I just trust, I just trust my spirit into your hands. It's just that moment, man, where Jesus, with His arms stretched out on the cross, just submitted to the will of the Father. And all that He accomplished through his death on the cross, man. Just like, just like Samson accomplished so much through his death and pushing those two pillars down, man, and, and defeating all those Philistines, that Jesus accomplished so much when he stretched his arms out on the cross through his death on that cross. And how he, man, he conquered sin. And, and, and the power of sin, you know, was gone for those who believe. And, and three days later, man, Jesus rose from the dead. And he conquered death. And so, man, what I want to tell you today, if this is you and you're stuck in this vicious cycle of porn and all this stuff, that, man, you're holding on to something. You haven't completely submitted <laughs> to the authority of Jesus. You haven't completely surrendered to the authority of Jesus. If, if you're calling yourself a Christian or, you know, even if, if you're not and you're in this vicious cycle of living and walking in spiritual dark, darkness, the Bible's like, man, you're a liar. If you say you know God and you have fellowship with God and you continue walking in spiritual darkness. But man, that it would be that moment just like Samson where we see, man, where he's like, think about it. He, he gives up his life. He gives up his life to accomplish his purpose. And it's no different than what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to daily crucify our life, to pick up our cross, to daily give up our life, you know, for him and for the good news. And that, you know, when Jesus stretched his arms out on that cross and, and, and submitted to the Father, that man, Jesus gave his life, gave his life so that we can have freedom, that today would be the day. So what I want to leave you with is that today would be the day that um, you stop living by seeing and you start living by believing, that you really put your faith in Jesus Christ, all of it, whether you're a Christian or not a Christian, you claim to be whatever, like 
man, if you're stuck in this vicious cycle and it seems like, man, you're constantly going, going off of and living by what you think looks good to you and you just got to have it, that, man, today would be the day. That's, that's it. That's it. That's all. Like today would be the day that, that you, you start living by believing and not by seeing and that you completely surrender your life. You completely give up your life and submit it to the authority of Jesus Christ. You put all your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on that cross and that three days later he rose from the dead and what the resurrection means too, man, that we can follow him, that he's alive, that he's here, <laughs> that, you know, when you put your faith in him and, and submit to his authority, he says he's going to put his spirit in you. And I know it, man. I know that he will because he did that with me. He did that with me. And I'm literally like, I'm not the person I used to be. I'm not anything like the person I used to be. Like, and, and there's no way that I could have accomplished it because I was that guy that, that lived by seeing and not believing. And, and after I you know, put my faith in Jesus Christ and I submitted and surrendered my entire life, like gave up my life for Jesus, you know, he put his spirit in me and now I live by believing and not by seeing. And that, that's what I pray today, man, that today would be the day that you start living by believing and not by seeing anymore. You put your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross, you know, and what that means that, that sin has lost his power in your life. If you put your faith in Jesus Christ and, and, and that, you know, you believe that he rose from the dead, that he's alive, you know, and that he'll put his spirit in you and and you can overcome all that stuff. We don't we don't have to we don't have to live by seeing anymore. We can live by putting our faith in Jesus Christ. Who would recovered that kind.